Hi guys, it's Peter and welcome to our channel. And here's my Superflux V2 high torque motor. I received it a couple weeks ago and before I install it to my project board, I decided to take it apart and see how well it built. And I'm glad I did disassemble it. And also in my previous videos, I did compare it to GT motor as well. If you're interested to see what's different between those two and go for uh, look, look at those videos as well. Pretty much, if you saw my previous videos, you know I find it couple issues which I didn't like it. The winding was a little bit too loose, not a little bit, quite loose. Plus, it's not e equally made, looks like. Then the sensor board, uh, because it's holding only with one zip tight, it's kind of wobbling back and forth. To fix that issue, I did apply it uh, five minutes epoxy in each corner. Now, now it's solid. It's not. It's not wobbling. About the winding, if you saw before, how not equally same height and some portion winding was moving back and forth freely. Here's the original video. The winding itself it looks like it's poorly done on mine. Uh, some portion it sticks almost half inch higher than rest. The old winding itself looks like it's been smashed with 2x4. Some portion is moving side to side freely, which is no good. Also, this video I uh, did submit it, uh, send it to Fungineer, and for my surprise, they did reply it. Uh, they didn't reply to, uh, reply to my email, they replied to my previous video. And here's a screenshot of uh, them reply. Hello, Petter. Good comparison. Let me clarify we cannot wind our motors by machine due to small quantity. The machine cost is only justifiable if we produce 1000s of motors. However, the windings of all motors should be within acceptable limit, a few m, and should not short with the hub. You can safely ride the motor with confidence. If you have any issues, you can let us know and we will replace it. And pretty much they saying uh, because it's a uh, low quantity motors made, they not really can afford to use uh, machinery. It's a hand winding and from hand winding, you have to kind of expect the winding is not, not going to look nice and straight. For example, like a Fusion Motion GT winding. But, of course, the, that, that's understandable. The, the tolerance, in my opinion, the winding, even the hand winding, but supposed to be a little bit tighter. Much tighter. I mean, supposed to be tight, make sure it's not moving side to side freely, like I just showed you before was doing. Uh, pretty much what I did, I kind of using uh, rope and tight it uh, each one in, uh, itself and then chain it to another one. I saw they doing that on the big commercial motors, in runners. For in runners, it's very important. The uh, winding is it's nice and tight because it spins high RPMs. All those motors on the one wheel is the out runner. That means the inner part it stay, stays, it doesn't move, and the hub itself it spins. For for outrunner, the winding is still very important to make to make sure it's tight. Because for example, if the winding like used to be all those wires is spraying like that, the efficiency will be slightly less. Plus the motor with loose winding, it will be a little bit louder. It will produce some kind of weird sound. It can make a humming sound because the wires is too loose and when magnetic field when it's running it creates magnetic fields and the wires vibrates. You have to tighten them. And uh, that's what I did pretty much like I said. And now it's all nice and tight and also from side to side you not can move it. I mean it's it's solid like a rock. Then one more fly I found it. Uh, that probably particles to my motor. I'm not saying it's going to be in all motors. Uh, the axle itself, when they uh, machine it, well, it's not a real machine, it's a casted. And this side, uh, the edge itself even doesn't have a, a cable, but it's kind of nice and smooth. It's not really rounded, it's sharp corner. On, on this side, especially where the cable come from, you see, guys, if you look at my cable, already got some deep scratches, kind of deep, deep cuts. It didn't cut through that isolation, but I'm pretty sure if I use it the way it was, it will do it, damage it. What I did with a Dremer tool, 
or or you can use a different uh, different grad uh, sandpaper and with blimmer tool pretty much I cut it that little corner make I kind of round it from both sides and then with fine sandpaper I sand it down to make sure it's nice no sharp corners anymore and where the bolt is coming through slightly you don't have to round it really bad don't do that just just take it off that uh, little sharp edge from casting from when they are casted aluminum well guys pretty much my motor looks like it's ready to be put together which i can trust to that motor now even from beginning i didn't I, in my previous video i didn't say that's a bad motor don't buy it or anything like that i, I was uh, what i was saying for 500 dollars the quality should be better yeah, and uh, i'm glad uh fan engineer they did recognize it uh those issues and um i hope in eventually in new batch the uh, uh the winding will be much tighter maybe the sensor board also will be reinforced with a uh, few drops of uh, epoxy to make sure it's no is no me uh, no movement and will be good well guys pretty much that's all i got for this video i hope it was interesting enjoyable if you guys did enjoy it thumbs up like always and i will be really appreciate thank you bye bye